guys, I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and today we're gonna tackle a partial seam. Now this is something I don't do often, but it's always great to have a reference for it. So I think this contrary husband block is gonna be a great tool for you to refer back to. So let's get into it. This is the contrary husband block that was originally published in the Kansas City Star newspaper in 1938. It makes you wonder what inspired that name, but the story may be lost to history. Of course, a few years later, there was a contrary wife block as well. Let me know if you would like us to do a classic and vintage video on that block, and don't forget to subscribe and share this quilt with your friends. Start by downloading the free Contrary Husband quilt block pattern at the Fat Quarter Shop. And if you want to turn it into a quilt with four size options, we have a low price PDF pattern to make the full quilt. I'm gonna be using the Shoreline Collection by Camille Ross Kelly for this quilt. It's got beautiful rich blues, greens, and to change it up a little bit, I'm using a medium print for my background and it helps the light prints pop in the blocks. The cutting for this block is very simple, so pick your prints, follow the cutting, and let's get sewing. And if you're making the quilt, you will find your fabric requirements on page one, and the sizes are table runner, lap, twin, and queen. So the technique in this block is really gonna focus on how you get these rectangles on each side with no seams. So this is the easiest part right here is the step we're going to do. So you're gonna take a fabric B rectangle, two fabric C squares, and you're gonna draw a line from corner to corner with a friction pin. You're gonna follow the diagram and make sure you have your square going the correct direction. And here, you can either put seam aligned glue around the corners, or you can pin totally up to you what you do. I find the seam aligned glue gives me a more accurate result. You're gonna stitch directly on that line, trim a quarter inch away and press according to the pattern. Then you're gonna take your second square and do the same thing on the bottom. And I would just use three dots of seam aligned glue, stitch directly on the line, trim a quarter inch away, press according to your pattern. And then you're going to have four of these crossways units, and this is gonna be what is going to surround our center piece, which is our fabric A. And I'm gonna kinda lay that out just so you can see how we're gonna do it, so we can kinda talk through the trick to this. So if you look at the layout of this block, it's not a traditional nine patch square where you can just sew rows. You're gonna go in a round. And I'm gonna show you some tricks on how to get this. And I think you'll wanna save this video for future reference because, cool tip, I used to do this block wrong. And when I was reading our pattern that we published, I was like, oh, for five years I've been sewing this block wrong, so now I have even more to teach you. So let me show you how you do this. You're gonna start with your fabric A square. I'm gonna move these out of the way, and you're gonna take this square, put it right side together. And then what I'm gonna do is make a mark a half inch up right here. And what we're gonna do is pin this, and you're gonna sew with a quarter inch seam, whatever your normal stitch length is. I'm gonna use RFL 2000, I'm gonna stitch all the way to that half inch mark, and then I'm gonna back stitch slightly, and then we'll press. So you can see I started at the top, I went all the way to my mark and then back stitched. I'm gonna set my seam and press toward the square. And it's gonna look a little funny, but when we get to the end, it'll all make sense. Now from here, we're gonna go to the top. We're gonna add this unit here and we're gonna put it right sides together. And this time you can pin on each intersection. And you'll notice our quilt sample we pressed open. And I think you get a better result with pressing open. So you can do that or you can follow the pressing arrows. So you're gonna poke this pin at the quarter inch seam. And then you're gonna put the pin right where that intersection is at that quarter inch seam. Let your pin stand up and then take the pin out and then just repin. And from here, you're just gonna sew a quarter inch seam and you don't have to back stitch this time. Just go from one end to the other. And then before you go iron, just make sure that that intersection meets up. 
So from here, you're gonna set your seam and then you're going to press also towards that navy. Now we're gonna to move to page two and then we're gonna add the right side and we're gonna do that same thing where we put right sides together, poke a pin, stitch down the entire seam. The trick is gonna be on your last two seams. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is we're gonna add this bottom part, but before we do that, I'm gonna take this left piece and I'm gonna pull it all the way back and I'm gonna pin it so it is completely out of your way and you don't accidentally get part of this in your seam. Put this here, right sides together, poke a pin and stitch all the way across. And when you get here, it's tricky because you've pulled this back, but you have to get this right here. So you have to sew right here without catching anything over here. So you'll just pin a couple of times and it'll be kind of wonky, but pinning it out of the way will help. Okay, and the reason we left the half inch is so you have that room to go across. And this is where I used to do this seam completely wrong and yesterday realized what I've been doing wrong. So this will work much better than what I used to do. Again, sew all the way down without a back stitch. And then you wanna see if that lines up, unpin what you had pinned, make sure it looks like this where you didn't accidentally catch any stitches in this first piece. Now we're gonna set this seam, press to the inside, and we're just gonna to try to keep this out of the way so we don't press this funny. Now you're going to put this together, and this is kinda of gonna get wonky, so just keep that out of the way. And I'll just pin over here just to keep it flat, even though we've already sewn over that. That'll just kinda of keep this out of the way. You're gonna do your polka pin here again, a quarter inch pin here. And it's gonna be kind of bulky right here. So you just kinda of have to be careful with the bulk. And here, you wanna start on this end right here because if you start over here, you might accidentally kinda of get some of the fold underneath. You just wanna stitch all the way up to your previous stitches. Stitch a couple stitches over your previous and then you don't have to back stitch. If you go too far, you might start bunching up under here. And if you've ever sewn a block like this, you'll know what I mean. So now this is how it looks on the front and the back. And so you're gonna want to keep this still going this way. So I'm just gonna press from the back. Get it nice and flat and then do a all over press on the front. So this is the block we made on the left and this has partial seams. When you look at the back, you're gonna see one rectangle, one rectangle, one rectangle, and one rectangle. Now there's a way to do this without partial seams and it makes sense when I show you from the back because you would have four half square triangles and four rectangles with corner squares and this would take a lot longer and the one on the left in person looks a lot better because you can see right here, the print stays in one piece. And here, the print breaks up here, 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 and here. So this will give you a more beautiful block and it's also easier once you get the hang of it and it's much quicker. So this is your contrary husband block. This is your sashing and your cornerstones. And you'll notice we use the same fabrics in the block as we did in our, our sashing. And that's gonna give you a really blue effect. If you wanted to change the design, you could change your sashing to maybe a dark navy or all lights, and you would get a totally different look by just changing your sashing and your cornerstones. I love the inner and the outer border. Another thing you can do is we put this binding on the straight. You could always put it on the bias. And we did a really fun pantograph, so it looks like little pinwheels blowing in the wind. I hope you love the technique of the partial seam. I know once you try it, you'll love it too. And since this is a classic and vintage series, I wanted to know, do you wanna see the Contrary Wife block also? Because we could add that to our rotation if you're interested. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time.